Hey everyone, it's Ivan, KipAdisher.com. Out here today to continue the story of my rifle I went and built with Jim Chambers Flintlocks. If you've been following along with my content a while back, earlier this year, I ended up going back for a week to Asheville, North Carolina, and ended up building out this flintlock rifle from a kit from Jim Chambers Flintlocks. Amazing experience, spent like five days straight working on this. At the end of that five days, I had a mechanically functioning gun, but it was not finished. Like the wood wasn't finished, the metal wasn't finished. So I was like, I should probably finish that, but life happened, other things came up. Fortunately, there was a little bit of motivation bred through competition of sorts. My buddy Jason, owner of Muzzle Loader Magazine, we both have a mutual friend, Kyle Lamb of Viking Tactics. And Kyle actually built out a gun too, had not finished it. And so somehow, I'm pretty sure through Jason, it turned into a competition of seeing who could bring down game first with a rifle that like they actually built. And so I'm like, man, I need to finish my rifle. And uh, I did just that. I initially ended up getting some stain for the wood and the wood came out incredible from what it was to what it is now. I wasn't really expecting that, but yeah, it has like almost this cool kind of like tiger stripe to it. And then I ended up getting some finish as well and putting a number of coats of finish on there. And then trying to figure out the barrel, I was like, what do I want to do? Like. They used to brown barrels and some other things, basically kind of along the line, the bluing, I guess. And I was like, I've patinaed knives before. This is basically raw steel, like should be able to patina it. So got after it with basically some mustard and ended up doing two different layers of it. I did it once, eventually washed it all off, oiled it. And then I'm like, ah, I'm going to try for a little darker color. So another round of mustard and came out even darker and better i think and now just continue to oil it real quick too backing up the patch box lots of times this will just be like really plain wood or a brass overlay or something like that and i was like i want to make something kind of cool and so that's what i did I ended up taking a piece of wood that was kind of like my, I don't know, like practice, my study for what would be the final product. Started going and I'm like, all right, I'm confident enough. Hopefully I won't mess this thing up. And went after it and eventually created this pretty cool patch box cover. Basically a coffin with a skeleton in it. Some of you guys would probably like, Ivan, why would you put that in your patch box? Maybe a little bit morbid. I would disagree. Memento Mori, remember you must die. Kind of has become a pretty important theme in my life. And while you can look at it in two different ways, it's like, man, I'm gonna die, because spoiler, you will end up dying. And that can be a real bummer, or can basically serve as motivation to go out and live a better life than maybe you're living right now. But at any rate, that's my patch box. I think it's pretty cool. And really pleased with how this rifle came out. So I was like, man, I wanna go shoot this thing. I knew I was still missing a few things, like basically some cleaning components and stuff like that. But I'm like, I wanna make this happen. I've been waiting. So I ended up going out to the range to try and do just that. Spoiler, it did not go as planned. Here's what happened. I ended up getting my 54 caliber ball, which was actually, I believe, 5.3 or 0 0.053, whatever, just under 54 caliber. Tried to get this thing in here and do my 54 caliber Lancaster Pennsylvania style rifle. Would not go, like I'm deforming the lead. 
I'm like, okay, we'll have some like 520 balls. Tried one of those, would not go. Super frustrated. Ended up going back. Big picture went and checked the photo of the tube I had that the barrel came in, marked 54 caliber. Took the gun apart, underside of the barrel, marked, engraved, 54 caliber. Ended up calling rice barrels. Calipers, everything else, spoiler, this is a 50 caliber Lancaster, Pennsylvania style flintlock rifle. Not what I was expecting. Honestly, I was pretty disappointed. In part because I really wanted to shoot this thing and I finally had scrounged up a number of different 54 caliber balls to kind of try and see what this thing would shoot well with and it was a no-go. Rice barrels, really cool over there. They're like, hey, here's some things we can do. We can send you a new barrel. And I'm like, no, it took me forever to fit this thing. And they're like, well, we can have you send us that barrel and we can basically take the uh, breech plug out so that you don't have to reaccomplish that. And we can put a new barrel. And I'm just like, don't worry about it. I have a 50 caliber rifle. It is what it is. I was bummed because I really wanted to shoot it. So I ended up going, finding some, there goes Peanut. He's pretty excited about something. But ended up finding some 50 caliber bullets, like .49 or whatever it was. Took it out there and had a go at finally firing my first shots through this rifle. Spoiler, didn't quite go the way I was hoping for. A couple things came into play. One, I went to go pick up some stuff to include basically a cap for the thing of powder so that I could easily pour it into the powder measure and like the pan and everything like that. They gave me the wrong one, which was a bummer. So I'm pouring out of this jug, trying not to just spill it all over the place. And then having never shot flintlocks or anything like that, definitely and I don't know if it was my doing or the gun or what but sometimes there was a flash in the pan and not firing so it gave me the opportunity to try the ball puller that I had just bought basically it goes on the end of the ramrod goes down threaded into that lead ball pull the thing out and yeah eventually did some shooting but trying to kind of work through and figure out what load was going to work best Initially, just making sure I was on paper at like 25 and then pushed it back to, I guess, 50 yards, shooting three rounds at about 80 grains, which is what I got right here. And then another three rounds at 90 grains right here. And another three rounds at 100 grains right here. After that, I was like, well, let's explore 85 grains. It took me a while to get through those rounds. I initially, I think, shot three at 70 grains too, but ended up shooting five at 85 grains and ended up with this terrible group right here. Ivan, why'd you shoot a terrible group? Probably, probably all me. Honestly, to shoot whatever it was, probably less than 20 rounds, I was out there for like over two hours. Not a fast gun to shoot. And in part, yeah, me just ending up with like misfires, trying to clear out the, uh, it was a monster, especially coming into it, not really knowing anything. And that last group, probably not indicative of the gun or anything like that, but me just basically fatiguing behind it. But I'm not done. I think it's cool. Hopefully I'm gonna get this thing shooting good and do stuff with it so it doesn't just end up like hanging on my wall because it looks pretty damn cool but i will keep you posted as i go out and spend more time with this gun but that's my adventure so far with it and as always thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.